Okay, so I made something called Dark Box, which is like Light Box, um, but I just wanted to make it myself so I could learn some animation techniques. Um, this is going to be complicated to explain, and I'm going to try, but I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out. Basically, here's the final effect. You click a link, and a div comes up, okay? And you click anywhere to make it go away. Now, one thing you can do is I've made these options. You can open, that was Y, here's open X, okay? And then here is open center. Got it? Okay, so there's three different animations you can do here. So, let's get down to first things first. How do you start creating this? Okay. Well, let's go to the function that calls it. Basically, it's an A tag that has a class dark box. And then it's got the href set to pound use this div. And I'm going to basically going to use this text to find the div, okay? So the div needs to be somewhere on the page first. So it's on the add product page, which is the page I'm on. And it's just down here. It's called use this div. It doesn't show up on the page because I'm hiding it. I'll show you how I hide it in a second. So you can pass height and width, okay, in this div, which will set the height and width of the div and just put whatever you want in it, okay? Then in the JavaScript file, in a document.ready, okay, grab each class dark box, okay, grab each one, and to each one. Now, this is double jQuery. The reason I'm doubling it up here is because remember what the href was. It's got that pound sign already, okay? Uh, and the only reason I'm doing that pound sign is because if you don't do the pound sign in an href, then the link will actually try to execute, and I'm not doing a return false. So putting that pound sign there makes the website think that you're going to somewhere on the website. So I'm leaving it there for now. It just happens to be that I can use it. So I get this particular dark box, the href attribute, which returns a pound something. So I wrap that again in jQuery, and it'll basically look like div um, equals, you know, pound this div. That's what it'll basically return to me, which is what, this is how you use jQuery to get an ID. So I'm just doubling it up there, since I'm already having that, that pound sign. So this gets me which div is associated with this particular dark box. And I hide it. That way it hides every div that's associated with the dark box, okay? Then I add a click attribute to it that basically starts the dark box function. And it passes it that particular div, okay? Now let's take a look at this function. Okay, this notation is shorthand JavaScript if condition notation. Basically, the equivalent of this statement is saying if div dot attribute width, right? And you know if you don't put anything else, it's asking if it's true. Okay, so if that, then say w equals, and I'll just copy this, bam, like that. And then I'll do else and this. Okay, so this and this are equal. Okay, basically getting rid of the if altogether, it's testing what's in parentheses. If it's true, do this. If it's false, do this. Okay, it's just making the code simpler. Now, here's what exactly we're doing with this if you set the width, okay then set the letter W to that width attribute. If you forgot to set the width or didn't want to, it will automatically calculate the width of that element. So for example, let's uh, go ahead and go to that div and get rid of the width and height. Okay? Not using it. Now we'll reload this page and go to Darkbox, and you'll see how now it's using this. Now obviously it didn't animate correctly, so I'll need to check on that. So for now, um, go ahead and set the height and width, but that's the idea is that without the height and width set, it'll still work. So let me actually make sure. Okay, so I have some work to do. But, moving on. Uh, okay, so this will just k test, you know, if the height and width is set. Next thing, using jQuery to create elements, okay, we're going to create a div, and because jQuery, because this jQuery returns an object, okay, we can append another jQuery function to it, again making the code quicker, and we're going to add the class dark cover. So all these static 
CSS we've already put here. So dark content, okay, is uh, and actually it should be dark cover first. Is that how I did it? Uh, dark cover is first. Okay, so let's take a look at dark cover. So dark cover is fixed position to the zero zeroth position, top left. It's Z indexed to 100, which is going to be on top of everything else. It's black, and the opacity starts at zero, okay? And then the width and height is 100%. Let me show you what 100% does. That way, when I move this around and get bigger and smaller, okay? Now, I know the box isn't moving. I didn't really want it to move. I'd like to one day, but not right now. So you can see this black, uh, you know, thing is actually 100%, so it will always be there. Now keep in mind while I'm doing this, I haven't tested in other browsers other than Safari and Firefox, so I may have to do other fixes for IE, but for now, uh, because I'm using jQuery, I think we'll be alright. Maybe not. So, moving on, uh, using jQuery's prepend, it's going to do something like this. So here's the body tag, it's going to put my div right there, okay? So it's going to put the div right underneath the body tag, which is exactly where I want it to go. I want it to be before everything else. Then we're going to fade it in fast. Fade to 0.8 opacity. Okay, fade to is a quick jQuery function that fades in at this speed to this opacity. Okay, next we're going to create the content box using the exact same thing, except this div has some HTML in it, and we're going to set the HTML of this new div called the content div to that div's HTML using jQuery, of course. And then we're going to add the dark content class. Now the dark content class, if we take a look at it is fixed again, it's white, it's got a border, it's got a padding, it's overflow is hidden so it won't go crazy, it's got a font color, and it's got a font family, that's it. Everything else will be calculated. So let's move on to the calculations. Okay, again, I'm going to have a real hard time explaining, so I'll actually come back to this switch statement in a second. Let's move down here. We're going to add CSS onto the content. We're going to set the left to X and the top to Y and the Z index to 200, which is greater than the original uh, 100. So we know this will be on top. So where is X and Y? X and Y, we'll just take uh, the default center. Okay, X is jQuery getting the window, getting the width, and then half of the width, half of the window width. So if you think about it, uh, if we need an object to be in the center, it's got to be, you know, I'll actually show you that. If we want this to be in the center, it's the whole width divided by 2, okay? And then in the very end, it's actually going to be, so from here, it's the whole width divided by 2, and then subtracting the width of this box divided by 2, okay? Just, that's just how it works. So, by default, we'll set it to this, okay? Again, these are starting values, okay? Because in the second, we're going to append that content box, Okay, and I know I'm getting a little fast and complicated here, so read just read this through. And then we're going to use jQuery's animate class, okay? We're going to animate it to opacity 1, so we're going to fade it in. We're going to animate the width to whatever we set W to, the height to whatever we set H to. So it's going to animate, so basically whatever we start width and height from, okay, which should definitely be less than the final width and height. So width and height, again, were the all the way up here, or the width and height of the box. So we're going to end at the full width and height of the box. Okay? And then we're going to end at whatever end top is and our left top is. Okay? And we're going to take a thousand milliseconds to do it. And I'm using the easing class to do ease out expo. And if we look at the easing class, all it is is this easing.js file that I got offline. Just look up jQuery easing and you'll find it. Okay? Uh, moving on. Afterwards, we're going to add a click listener to uh, the original box, to the uh, dark black box, and when you click it, it's going to fade out both boxes, okay? Basically, what's going on here in general, I'm not actually going to go more into this, all that's really happening is this box is growing from this corner, but it's also moving the opposite direction. So we're growing from top left to bottom right, but we're also moving from bottom right to top left to counteract it. That's what makes it look like it's coming out from the center, okay? Using top left inversely from uh, from bottom right. So just take that into account. Uh, I'll go ahead and take a look at this code if you want to use it for yourself. Again, I need to do more testing and some more work on it. But basically, that's the idea.